Are your prescriptions making you feel sicker? Then you've been drug mugged. Learn how to fight the side effects and reclaim your health. Well, welcome to the 700 Club. While the world has focused on the popular unrisings in the Middle East, Israel has seen a sharp increase in terrorist attacks in recent weeks. And it also faces the rise of radical Islam in neighboring countries. Eric Stackelbeck spoke with Israel's vice prime minister about the growing number of threats against the Jewish state. The upsurge in rocket attacks out of Gaza and the recent deadly bombing of a bus station in Jerusalem is no coincidence, according to the second highest ranking member of the Israeli government. We believe that behind the scene, Iran is involved. Israeli Vice Prime Minister Moshe Yalon told CBN News in an exclusive interview that Israel believes Iran is trying to exploit the current instability in the Middle East. First of all, to export what they call the ideology of the revolution and to undermine moderate regime. On top of it, to challenge us. It seems like Iran has given the green light to its proxies, like Hamas, like Islamic Jihad, to up the ante, so to speak, against Israel to increase attacks. This is our understanding. According to Yalon, a massive shipment of Iranian weapons bound for Gaza that was recently seized by Israel was further proof of Iran's intentions, which he says extend far beyond the Middle East. We have in Tehran a, a, a messianic, apocalyptic uh, regime. We are only the minor Satan. America is a great Satan. What is America? It's the West led by the United States. As their aim is to wipe Israel off the map of the earth on the way to defeat America. But he says the Iranians are not alone in inciting terror against Israel. If Israel doesn't appear on the Palestinian maps, all the land of Israel is covered with the Palestinian flag. If they consider occupation since 48, not since 67, it means that the conflict is not about the size of Israel it's about, or its borders, but it is about our very existence. Yalon is also concerned about developments in the nation bordering Israel to the south, Egypt, where the radical Muslim Brotherhood is steadily gaining influence. They have very clear goal to impose Islam everywhere, either by converting non-Muslims to become Muslims or to use a sword to kill them. I can't speak about moderate Muslim Brotherhood elements. No way. And another international challenge to Israel is also building. The Palestinian Authority seems to be uh, encouraging the EU and the UN to unilaterally declare a Palestinian state. To force Israel for such a move it will be a disaster, not just for the state of Israel, for the West as well. As for sure, what we will face in the West Bank, in Judea and Samaria, is going to be a failed and hostile entity. Despite the variety of possible threats, Yalon says Israel will be prepared for any challenge that comes its way. Eric Stackelbeck, CBN News, Washington. Thanks, Eric. The Bible is being fulfilled before our very eyes, we're seeing the unfolding of prophecy right on the money. Lee Webb has the rest of our top stories of the CBN Newsroom. Lee? And President Obama told a nationwide audience last night that wherever people long to be free, they will find a friend in the United States. That's part of his rationale for launching military action against Libya. White House correspondent Jennifer Wishon has more on the president's speech. President Obama never used the word war to describe the U.S.-led military campaign against Muammar Gaddafi. But speaking to the American people from the National Defense University in the nation's capital, he defended every step his administration has taken to lead a campaign that looks like war. When our interests and values are at stake, we have a responsibility to act. Libyans took to the streets six weeks ago, demanding change of a dictator who has oppressed them for 40 years. If we waited one more day, Benghazi, a city nearly the size of Charlotte, could suffer a massacre that would have reverberated across the region and stained 
the conscience of the world. President Obama has clearly stated Colonel Gaddafi must go. And as long as he's in power, Obama says Libya will remain a dangerous place. But don't expect U.S. snipers to take Gaddafi out. If we tried to overthrow Gaddafi by force, our coalition would splinter. We would likely have to put U.S. troops on the ground to accomplish that mission or risk killing many civilians from the air. Instead, the president plans to apply political pressure to force Gaddafi out, but Republican Senator John McCain urged the president to continue tough military action. I welcome the president's clarity that the U.S. goal is for Gaddafi to leave power, McCain writes in a statement, but an equal amount of clarity is still required on how we will accomplish that goal. The United States and our allies must continue to take all necessary measures to compel Gaddafi to leave power. Meanwhile, the president offered insight into the Obama doctrine, the foreign policy ideology he's practiced over the past six weeks. Real leadership creates the conditions and coalitions for others to step up as well, to work with allies and partners so that they bear their share of the burden and pay their share of the costs. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton is in London today meeting with international allies to discuss handing over control of the mission to NATO. Jennifer Wishon, CBN News, the White House. Pat, did the president convince you? Are you kidding? Nothing he does convinces me except that the, he, we need a new president, but that's neither here nor there. Um, Lee, uh, you know, he said something, anytime people are crying out for help, the United States will be with them. Well, those people in Iran were crying out for help. They, they were revolting against that oppressive dictatorship. We didn't lift a finger to help them. Not one word, not a word of encouragement, not anything. So, I mean, this is just empty rhetoric. And that's what makes me so sick. Lee? Pat, on tomorrow's 700 Club, we are going to look at a very key issue. Just who are the rebels in Libya? And we will have an exclusive interview with potential Republican presidential candidate Michelle Bachman. Then on Thursday, Pat will talk with Congressman Paul Ryan about the growing federal debt and the Republican plans for the budget. One other program note, on our website, you can still see Eric Stackelbeck's exclusive report on a new video out of Iran. It is a compelling story about how some Muslims believe the appearance of the Islamic Messiah, better known as the Mahdi, may be near, and that Iran will play an important role in the Islamic version of the end times. That story is found at CBNNews.com. Well, as Pat indicated uh, earlier, the question a lot of folks are asking, will the U.S. come to the aid of other Middle East countries facing unrest, countries like Syria? Today, we learned that the Syrian cabinet and its prime minister are expected to resign. Chris Mitchell has that story now from Jerusalem. The resignations are the latest concession by Syrian President Bashar Assad to the protesters rocking his country. The current government, formed two years ago, is expected to be replaced within 24 hours, but leaves Assad himself in power. The demonstrations represent the biggest threat to Assad since he succeeded his father 11 years ago. Assad comes from a minority Muslim group called the Alawites, and dominates a predominantly Sunni Muslim population. In Damascus, hundreds of thousands of supporters fill the streets of Syria's capital on behalf of the Syrian president. But the anti-government protesters have been demanding economic and social reform and an end to the 50-year state of emergency. During those demonstrations, police have used live ammunition to crush the protest and have killed dozens. After trying to crush the demonstrations with force, now Assad seems trying to quell the demonstrations with concessions. Whether or not he can succeed remains to be seen, as yet one more Arab nation teeters on the brink. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. Pat, what do you think? Well, I think this uh, Assad is weak. His father, Hafez al-Assad, was one tough guy. Uh, the Muslim Brotherhood tried to revolt against him. He slaughtered 20,000 of them in a city called Hama. This was the Muslim Brotherhood. He wouldn't tolerate it. And uh, he just slaughtered them, killed them ruthlessly. He was a ruthless guy. This other fellow is, uh, well, he's, he's under the thumb of the military from what I gather. Just a question of how long he can hold on. But it's a shaky situation. Lee? 
Japan's prime minister says the country is on maximum alert as it tries now to bring the nuclear crisis there under control. He told his parliament that Japan is dealing with its worst crisis since World War II. The Fukushima nuclear power plant is still leaking radiation. The mission to stabilize the plant keeps running into setbacks. This is really an international nuclear crisis, and it's far beyond the capability of one utility being TEPCO or even the Japanese government. Right now, workers at the plant are trying to pump contaminated radioactive water out. At the same time, they're working to pump water in to cool overheated fuel rods. Many say that cooling those rods should be the priority. If the temperature gets too high, those rods will release plutonium, and that's even more dangerous. The European Union says it will ban cars from all European cities by 2050. Their aim is to cut CO2 emissions by 60 percent over the next 40 years. Members of the EU Transport Commission insist, though, that new taxes on fuel would eventually force people to use alternate means of transportation. But the United Kingdom is rejecting that proposal. Transport Minister Norman Baker saying we will not be banning cars from city centers any more than we will be having rectangular bananas. And a spokesman for the UK Independence Party said the EU must be living in an alternate reality where they can spend trillions and ban people from their cars. This sort of greenwashing, grandstanding adds nothing and merely highlights their grandiose ambitions. High gas prices here at home are draining consumers of the extra money they're getting from the cut in Social Security taxes. Consumer spending and personal income rose last month due to those cuts. But while Americans made and spent more, economists say more than half of that money went straight into people's gas tanks. Gas prices have jumped more than 50 cents in the last year alone. Right now, the average price for a gallon of regular gas is $3.58. Pat? And it's going higher. But the, the um, price of crude oil still stays stu stubbornly above $100. It's $103, I think. Right now, it was 105. Want to give any prognostication to how high it might go? Yeah, oh yeah, I think it'll go to $200 pretty quick. It's just wow. a question of one or two explosions in the Middle East. You know, if the terrorists begin to work on the uh, uh, Rastanur uh, depot in uh, Saudi Arabia and some of the other places where there's oil, uh, it, it could uh, bring it down very seriously. So. Not a pleasant prospect. So maybe the Europeans, they all start riding bicycles. It might be interesting. <laughs> Doesn't sound like the UK yeah. is buying that. <laughs> Get your stock in bicycle companies. <laughs> Bizarre. Right. Well, still ahead, we're going to bring it online. So if you've got a question for Pat, just log on to CBN.com. Our chat room is open and we want to hear from you. But first, an unusual education in a remote part of the world. We'll take you inside schools without walls when we come back. Coming up later, are your prescriptions making you feel sicker? Then you've been drug mugged. Learn how to fight the side effects and reclaim your health. Plus, a biker in a bad wreck. We saw um, a whole bunch of cars stopped and we knew. And on the brink of death. He was really severely affected by, uh, by the head trauma and uh, was not expected to survive. It was very bad. Attention investors, now is the time to protect your retirement accounts and investments. Excessive government spending is devaluing the U.S. dollar and high rates of inflation are coming. Gold has tripled since 2001 and some experts predict the prices will climb another 100%. Buy gold now, direct and wholesale with United Gold Group. The demand for gold around the world is higher than ever. Foreign countries like China and India are buying up gold at record rates. Why? What do they know that you don't? Call now and get your Gold Investor's Kit absolutely free. Call in the next five minutes and receive The Secret to Owning Gold in Your Retirement Account, also absolutely free. Just call 1-800-758-5070. That's 1-800-758-5070. This could be the most important call you make this year. United Gold Group, investing in America's future. Well, 20 years ago, the fall of communism in Russia ushered in a new era of religious freedom. And Christianity began to spread in that nation. 
But in the last few years, a church there developed a program called Schools Without Walls to train the next generation of Christian leaders. George Thomas has a very interesting story from southeast Russia. On a small hillside village, my parents abandoned me when I was six. Some 2,500 miles southeast of Moscow. I've been here for nine years and I've kind of gotten used to it. 15-year-old Vanya Zakharov and dozens of orphaned boys and girls watch a presentation of Bible stories through drama and music. I'm so glad these people came here. This has made my day. Mordvinova Svetlana and a team of Russian and Moldovan Christians are visiting Vanya's orphanage in southeast Siberia. We focus on children because they are the future of this country. Svetlana and the others on the team are part of a large group of young men and women training to be next-generation Christian leaders. The key is to recruit young people. Bulichev Ivan pastors an evangelical church in Minusinsk, Russia. For the last few years, he's used his church as a training center to recruit, teach, and prepare young people for full-time ministry. We run a program called Schools Without Walls. Each year, hundreds of people across Russia and in neighboring countries enroll in a two-year program on how to be effective communicators of the gospel message. Schools Without Walls is an initiative of Russian ministries, which focuses on bringing the gospel to the former Soviet Union. Last year, more than 2,000 students from over 250 churches in Russia, Ukraine, Belarus, Moldova, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, Tajikistan, and Kyrgyzstan enrolled in the classes. Mikhail Cherenkov is with Russian Ministries. Sharing the gospel in Russia is not easy. Sure, it has become easier since the fall of communism, but now so many people are obsessed with materialism and making money that they don't have time to focus on spiritual matters. So our main focus is to motivate young people for active ministry to go out share their faith in the culture. 19-year-old Vera Vasilikova is among those enrolled in Schools Without Walls. When she's not in class, You'll find her and many of her classmates involved in various evangelistic outreaches. Schools Without Walls helps me to articulate my faith. I used to be scared about sharing the gospel with others, not anymore. The classes give us the theological foundation. The outreach ministries provide the practical training. And the students are seeing the fruits. On a recent Thursday morning, members of Schools Without Walls in Minusinsk performed a musical at an area high school, drawing the praise of the school's principal. I'm not a Christian, but the message was very encouraging. Our young people deal with a lot of challenges like drugs, sex, alcohol. The Christian values these young people bring are good and should be shared. Pastor Bulichev says he wants his students to remember and learn from Russian Christians who sacrificed their lives in the early days to seeing the gospel preached throughout the land. October 29th, 1937, here, deep in the forests of Minusinsk, Russia, 22 Christian pastors were executed by KGB officers. Their bodies buried right here. They were killed for one sole reason, because they were Christians. Today, a memorial to remember what happened that horrific day. Those pastors sacrificed their lives for Jesus. They're the seedbed of the church. Our youngsters know that the baton of faith has been passed down to them. And so today across the former Soviet Union, young men and women are rising to the challenge and willing to spread the gospel and expand God's kingdom in this part of the world. George Thomas, CBN News in Minusinsk, Russia. Hey, those Russian young people, it's so beautiful to see them. It's so encouraging. Yeah. You know, it's so interesting, isn't uh -huh. it, how there was, there was such desolation there during yes. the, the heavy communist years, the Cold War. Then the, you, you see how the materialism comes in, but when people find out how hollow and empty the yes. materialism is, then the rise of faith comes but again. It'll take a while, Terry, for them to find that out, and that's what's happening in China, is what's happening in all these countries, is that, and, and when I spoke to church leaders right after the fall of communism, that was their worry, you know, mm -hmm. under persecution, we can handle it. Yes. You know, our faith will be strong under persecution, but it's this other, this materialism that we're not sure what to do with. Mm -hmm. And then the influx of, of Hollywood movies, secular values, materialism, uh, it's, it's tough to fight. It is. It is. Well, up next, a stunning revelation from America's most trusted pharmacist, 
your prescription could be making you sicker. Susie Cohen tells you why and what you can do about it. That's next. Doing a great job training her, brother Tom. What's Bethany? For all of us who've lost what we care about. When can I serve again? Only to discover. I can't even paddle out past the big waves. What we love. It's not going to be easy. I don't need easy. I just need possible. The greatest surfers know when the best waves are coming. You have that gift too. Go get them. Soul Surfer. In theaters April 8th. Rated PG. In the next 60 seconds, we want you to qualify to be the next $50,000 home makeover winner. Pick up the phone and get ready to start dialing when the number appears on your screen. Call the number on your screen now and we'll mail you a key. If your key opens the lock in your local direct buy club, you'll be the next $50,000 home makeover winner. Operators are standing by, so call right now. Direct Buy Club has already awarded over a million dollars, and someone is going to win the $50,000 home makeover. Why not you? If the phone number is blinking, the phone lines are open. Call now to receive your key and an invitation to your local Direct Buy Club, where members can save thousands or more paying low direct from the source prices on big ticket items. Like kitchen cabinets, home furnishings, flooring, bathroom fixtures, and so much more. Call now and get your key to winning a $50,000 home makeover. Someone is going to win the $50,000 home makeover. Why not you? Tomorrow. Never cease trying to be the best you can be. They called him the Wizard of Westwood. I won't like you all the same, but I hope I love you all the same. John Wooden, a legend on the court and off. Never think you're better than somebody else. Learn Coach Wooden's keys to success on tomorrow's 700 Club. Learn from others. You'll never know a thing that you didn't learn from somebody else. Doctors wear white coats. They have stethoscopes around their neck. And they write prescriptions. And many times those prescriptions are the result of... Uh, an agent or a salesman from a drug company telling them about these various medications. Well, these medications actually can be depleting your body of nutrients you need. They can rob you of energy, weaken your immune system, and actually make you quite ill. Watch this. Some of the most widely prescribed medications can be hurting you more than they're helping you. For example, statin drugs lower cholesterol, but also lower the production of CoQ10, a nutrient vital to energy production in our cells. Side effects of using statins include high blood sugar, which could be diagnosed as diabetes, or cardiac palpitations, which could be diagnosed as heart disease. Susie Cohen is America's most trusted pharmacist, and she calls the meds that rob our bodies of nutrients drug muggers. She says that prescription and over-the-counter drugs help millions, but they may also cause us to be sicker. Here's a book with an intriguing title, Drug Muggers. Did you ever get mugged? <laughs> These drugs are doing it. Susie Cohen's husband suggested this title. <laughs> yeah, you, what medications are robbing you of essential nutrients, Susie Cohen. Susie, good to have you with us. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks Welcome. for having me. Let me ask you something. I had dinner with a dear friend who was aching and suffering. His body was in all kinds of pain. He couldn't sleep well. And uh, I said, you know, that Lipitor is deadly. And he said, well, I've been taking Lipitor. And he said, I'm going to stop. Tell me about Lipitor. That's a statin. What about him? It is. Um, the statin medications are known to reduce cholesterol in the liver. They're very effective at their job. But when they reduce cholesterol in the liver, they also happen to reduce our natural levels of CoQ10. Okay. And CoQ10 deficiencies can lead to leg cramps and muscle weakness and spasms. And some people go on to develop a diagnosis of restless leg syndrome when it could just be the loss of the well, CoQ10. Actually, you can have a heart attack, too. Uh, congestive well, heart failure. because CoQ10 lives in the heart. Yeah. It protects the heart. So a deficiency of CoQ10 can lead to arrhythmias and heart failure in the in the long run so that's true we have to be mindful when we take medications that sometimes are good effects 
yeah. also happen to cause bad effects. Well, Lipitor, just to name one, is probably the most prescribed medication in America, isn't it? It's very popular, and there's there's many other statins, and there's many medications, and that's why I wrote the book because it's the side okay. effect solution. So if you have to take a medication per doctor's orders, then at least marry that medication with the right nutrient to restore what it's stealing from your body. All right, well, let, let's let's take this because so many people are involved in in this statin. So they're robbing you of CoQ10, which a lot of people don't even know what CoQ10, coenzyme Q10, which is so necessary for your body. What do you tell people to do then? Do you go off statins or you double your dose of vitamins? <laughs> no, I don't tell anybody to go off medications that their doctors have ordered for them. That's between them and their doctor. So if you're taking a statin medication, and I have two examples here, some right. popular ones, um, Zocor for, for one here, and also uh, to marry that medication with CoQ10 yeah. or its active form, Ubiquinol. Okay. A lot of people see Ubiquinol. They don't understand that that is the active bioactive form of CoQ10. And also to start including some foods that are rich in CoQ10 in their diet, such as lean meats and spinach and pistachios, of, as I've shown here. But, you know, you'd have to eat like two pounds at every sitting in yeah. order to get enough of the nutrient. It's better to take the nutrient. All right. Well, now, you've got some other things here that, that give us some other vitamins, I mean, some other uh, medications that sort of take sure. away vitamins. Well, antibiotics, very classic. People get infections and they have to take an antibiotic right. to fix that. But the antibiotics, they're kind of dumb. They don't know the difference between the good bacteria and the bad bacteria. So okay. they kill them all, which is why people who take antibiotics often end up with diarrhea and cramps and sometimes yeast infections and such. So what you can do is marry that medication with a probiotic. And I have Dr. O'Hara's probiotic shown here. This is very good because it helps your own garden of bacteria flourish. Okay. Yours is different than mine. Yes, all right. So with probiotics, more isn't necessarily How about better. yogurt? Does yogurt uh, work for that? Plain yogurt, not the kind with sprinkles and gummy bears and <laughs> chocolate. <laughs> and can't have any gummy bears. No, okay. no right. the kind that just says live active cultures. And kombucha, this is a fermented drink. It's kind of like tasty vinegar. <laughs> That's kombucha. a bottle of kombucha? Kombucha, yes. You can find this in health food stores. And sauerkraut. So this is the side effect solution to antibiotics. And I would start as soon as you take the antibiotic and continue thereafter sauerkraut. indefinitely. Sauerkraut. Why sauerkraut? Because it's fermented and it has those cultures that are good that it help does. grow your own microflora, Man. which is important. Without enough of your probiotics, you can have more frequent infections. You can be chronically fatigued. You're more at risk for candida a yeast that yeah. grows crazy, it's not good for us. So probiotics are the be all end all in terms of health. You start there and everything else can come behind it. All right, well I've got here in front of me some delicious vegetables. <laughs> we can Beans snack. and broccoli and... Yes, those are rich in B vitamins, particularly right. riboflavin, which is what I've shown here for antidepressants. Okay. So this is um, the generic to Paxil, Paroxetine, and I have a generic to Zoloft. Um, these are very popular antidepressants, and they're used to um, improve happy chemicals, if you will. So you want to marry that medication with B2, because if you don't, and All you right. run out of riboflavin, you are at more risk for migraines and headaches. Not so happy. <laughs> so you're taking Paxil to, to make you, you chill out and be happy, and, and, and yet it's going to make you have headaches. It's possible. It's right. possible. And this is the secret and why I wrote the book, because so many people need to take medications. They have to for one reason or another, right. but they don't feel well on them. And so they don't stay compliant. Okay. And this can be dangerous depending on the condition. So if you need to take your medicine, you need to be armed with the right information so you can feel better, mitigate those side effects, avoid them altogether. So you need the B-complex or riboflavin particularly or what? Yes, because certain medications can reduce our B vitamins, and in particular, when you reduce the riboflavin, uh -huh. then you're more susceptible to headaches. So to avoid that, you can eat a lot of green leafy vegetables or the broccoli, asparagus, and green beans. You know, a we lot have of them. people have migraines. They're going crazy with migraines, and they're taking uh, Zoloft or Paxil to, to be to be chill out, and and yet 
it's mm. possible that it's linked. And also artificial yeah. sweeteners, there seems to be a little bit of, of a, a connection there. So I would go off anything with artificial sweeteners, and that could help people with well, chronic headaches I, as well. I'll say a hearty amen to that, especially <laughs> the NutraSweet. I, th I think it's just awful. I mean, it's just, I mean, we've done stories about that, about what it's done to people. Mm. People have been washed out of airlines for drinking too many, you know, uh, soft drinks with uh, artificial sweet. Does, does that include all the artificial sweeteners or just um, nitro I, sweet? I would say anything that begins with artificial isn't good for the body. That's your key word. That's like the clue. Okay. And I don't mean to be funny, but it's funny, you know, that there's a key word there. All right. And people are praying for a better way. They're, they're waking up every morning praying that the day's better. And, you know, as a pharmacist for 22 years, I've seen so many desperate people. I also write a syndicated column. Yeah. And so people write to me from all over the world just, you know, begging and pleading for for a new way and some hope in their life. So I hope that I encourage um, our viewers today to to think outside the pill and start, you know, supplementing with the right nutrients. Well, but the, all right. Well, I'm over here now. I've got uh, some grains, great grains. and yeah, That's quinoa. Quinoa. And that's Hawaiian spirulina, which is a blue-green algae. Okay. Believe it or not, algae is good for you. Hey. <laughs> hey. All right. All right. <laughs> yeah. Right, now, now, what is this? Is now what I've I don't showed, need that. This is this is. Uh, uh, these are hormones. Hormones. Mm -hmm. They're women's hormones. You don't need those. <laughs> no, please. No, anything with that. It would make right. for an interesting segment, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we could YouTube that. Okay. So <laughs> we have hormones here for women who have menopausal problems on um, some oral contraceptives, and I've shown Premarin and uh, NuvaRing and Estradiol here. Now these medications classically mug your minerals. Okay. What does that mean? When a woman loses their minerals, it can lead to hypothyroidism, which is low thyroid. Yeah. It can also cause weight gain. Bone loss too, huh? Yes, it can cause bone loss. It can cause all kinds of problems in the pancreas. Fatigue, it can cause mood problems. This is the reason why so many women are taking these female hormones for example, to reduce hot flashes, mm -hmm. and they feel terrible within six months to a year. Their minerals are lost. So the antidote to that yeah. is Hawaiian spirulina. Hawaiian this is a rich spirulina. source of bioavailable minerals like magnesium, zinc, and selenium, mm. and iron, and it can restore those nutrients within a few weeks. That premarin, I mean, it's mare's urine, isn't it? That's what it comes. <laughs> I mean, that's premarin. That's what it is. Preg mare. Pregnant. Pregnant mare urine. urine. Yes. And women take pregnant mare urine is supposed to be good for them. <laughs> Apparently, they do. Horse urine is what it is. And oh um, boy, they're, they're well, <laughs> I mean, did you know that's what it was when premarin? It sounds so nice. Well, Prempro is the same thing, isn't it? It's a combination, combination. Of, of two different drugs. Now, if you want a natural bioidentical yeah. hormone, if you're a lady, then you just have to ask your doctor to prescribe bioidentical, which means it's biologically identical. Well, it's to better than taking a mare's urine. I agree. Okay. Well, <laughs> ladies, you didn't know you're getting mugged. You're hearing about it here on this drug mugger, Susie Cohen. This is fabulous. All right, one more little thing. I, I see shrimp and uh, what is this? Those are, that's liverwurst. <laughs> oh boy, liverwurst. And this is hamburger? Yes. Okay, well, now what's so that for? That, that's because those foods are rich in vitamin B12. And okay. B12 is actually depleted by diabetes medications such as gliburide and metformin. These are two popular diabetes medications. Now, remember, people with diabetes already have neuropathy, right? They have pins sure. and needle right, sensations, right. and it's very painful. Guess what? These diabetic medications have been shown to reduce those B12 levels even more so. So you need to restore that. Now, you'd have to eat, you know, two to three pounds of liverwurst at every meal. You don't yeah. want to do that. No, I don't want to do that. So right, I well. would recommend about 1,000 milligrams. I'm thousand? sorry, 1,000 micrograms, micrograms of vitamin of B12, B12 every well, day. The B12 is also you know, all kinds of depression if people, uh, you know, are depleted in vitamin B12. Yes, right? that's true. You're so smart. Depression, confusion, and also um, sores around the lips and the tongue and the mouth yeah. are very common well, with B2, B12 deficiency. B12 is a... Mm -hmm. B2 as well, huh? Yes, B2, yeah. B12, and B6. The okay. Bs. You can take a B complex if you have sores around Man. your mouth. Ladies and gentlemen, you ought to get this book. You, your, your doctor may be drugging you or mugging you. Drug muggers. <laughs>
This is tremendous. How come you wrote this book? Wow, that's a great question. I, I've always had a mission to help people feel better. And as a pharmacist for many years, I watched the medications being prescribed to people and they weren't feeling any better. And so being a nerd, yeah. I tried to figure out why is this going on? Why are these medicines causing so many problems? I just wanted to help people. When I found out the answer, I decided okay. to make that public so that people would feel better. Thank you. Susie, you're terrific. Drug muggers. You ought to read this. It's an interesting title, but uh, the thing you'd be taking to make you well actually may be making you sick. I'm a fan of vitamins and all these supplements, but whatever. Mary urine, please. <laughs> Terry? I used to be a horse fan, but not so much. Well, for more information on drug muggers, we have a free fact sheet available online. It's called Take Back What Medication Has Stolen, and you can find it at CBN.com. And still ahead, a wife runs to the scene of an accident and finds her injured husband. His helmet um, was cracked in the front and all the way, and uh, the stuffing was coming out of it and his ears were bleeding. He had uh, two detached retinas, uh, which meant that his, the nerves of his eyes had actually pulled away from the, 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 the globe, uh, which takes a severe injury. See how he survives, that's coming up. Plus, we're gonna be praying for you, so stay with us, we'll be back in a moment. Do you have money to burn? If not, you need to know that the paper dollars you're invested your life savings in are being consumed right now in a growing blaze of inflation and declining value. Economists know why the dollar is burning and at risk of crashing. It's because politicians and central bankers keep printing them. And this makes the dollars you've worked so hard for worth less and less. The politicians and bankers hated the gold standard because it forced them to be honest. That's why the U.S. dollar keeps losing value and could soon crash. The good news is that you can create your own personal gold standard and keep your savings protected when the dollar crashes. Call or visit online now. Find out more about the best performing assets of the 21st century from the best company in the country Swiss America. And welcome back to the 700 Club. Today marks the start of Senate hearings on Muslim civil rights. Senator Dick Durbin of Illinois says they're in response to what he calls an increase in anti-Muslim bigotry. The president of a group called Muslim Advocates is scheduled to testify, along with the Assistant Attorney General for Civil Rights and Washington, D.C. Cardinal Theodore McCarrick. Senator Durbin says that the Constitution guarantees free exercise of religion to all Americans, and he wants to renew the Founding Fathers' commitment to religious diversity. A Wisconsin court will hear arguments over the law which eliminates collective bargaining for state workers at issue whether the law has gone into effect and should be enforced. Republican Governor Scott Walker argues that the legislation is now binding, but other state and municipal leaders say it's not. Laws usually go into effect when the Secretary of State publishes them, but a restraining order has prevented the current Secretary of State in Wisconsin from doing that. However, a nonpartisan group has posted the law on a website, and Governor Walker says that's good enough for him. You can always get the latest from CBN News by going to our website at CBNNews.com. Pat and Terry will be back with more of the 700 Club after this. I was in a lot of pain. I remember feeling I don't want to have cancer. Why is this happening? I went to pray with my 10-year-old. He said that he wished he had two hearts because one of them was breaking. I had to reassure her a lot that I'm going to be okay. Things are going to be all right. You know, God's on our side. This is one thing that Cancer Treatment Center does for people. They give them the courage and the strength to battle cancer. When you first walk in that building, you almost feel like there's the presence of the Holy Spirit. It is about the patient. It is only about the patient. And what is it that they need and what do they want? Call now and we'll send you this free DVD that shows you how our very special team of experts and caregivers put you at the center of everything we do. Hope is alive at Cancer Treatment Centers of America. I don't really see how anyone can get through a life-threatening disease without the Lord in their life. He gives us the strength that we need to carry on. 
tomorrow. Never cease trying to be the best you can be. They called him the Wizard of Westwood. I won't like you all the same, but I hope I love you all the same. John Wooden, a legend on the court and off. Never think you're better than somebody else. Learn Coach Wooden's keys to success on tomorrow's 700 Club. Learn from others. You'll never know a thing that you didn't learn from somebody else. To see this week's top on-demand videos, go to CBN.com. When a sudden storm unleashed its wind and pounding rain, Cynthia Blaze's heart sank. She knew her husband Barry was in big trouble, riding his motorcycle. But nothing could have prepared Cynthia for what she saw minutes later at the scene of his accident. On Saturday morning, May 1st, 2004, Barry Blaze was riding his motorcycle home from a family gathering. His wife Cynthia was in the van ahead of him. A storm was approaching and Barry hoped he could beat it home. A bridge lay straight ahead. And it just had started to sp sprinkle a little bit and we were uh, just kind of driving around home and uh, right before we get onto this bridge, it had started to really, really rain really hard. And we're like, this isn't good, you know, Barry shouldn't be driving in this. But at that point, we were already onto the bridge. And so there's no, it's just a two lane road. There's no real spot to stop. And so my dad had pulled off after the bridge and we were kind of praying that Barry didn't get on the bridge. Cynthia and her parents were praying and looked back to see if he made it across the bridge. We turned back around the bridge and went back and that's when we saw um, a whole bunch of cars stopped and we knew. The force of the wind and rain and the water on the road had sent Barry head first into the concrete barrier. It was very bad. His helmet um, was cracked in the front and all the way and uh, the stuffing was coming out of it and his ears were bleeding. Paramedics rushed Barry to the closest trauma hospital where doctors gave him no chance of survival. He was really severely affected by, uh, by the head trauma. He had uh, two detached retinas, uh, which meant that his, the nerves of his eyes had actually pulled away from the, 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 the globe, uh, which takes a severe injury. And in addition, he had uh, injuries to both ears, which is an unusual situation. And he was suffering from, from hearing loss and uh, was, uh, you know, was not expected to survive. Barry remained in a coma as doctors did a CAT scan to check for skull fractures. They found none, but Barry was still unconscious. I was waiting in the waiting room and I called my sister-in-law and uh, she just prayed with me. And it was um, the best thing, what I needed at that moment. Barry made it through the night, much to the doctor's amazement, but woke up the next day and realized he was blind and partially deaf. You know, it was difficult at times, but I always knew. Um, but he's here. And I was just glad to have him for another day. As Barry became more alert, he spent a lot of time praying. I had this incredible sensation, though, of the Holy Spirit coming over me and telling me that everything was going to be okay, and that um, God was with me, and that he was now writing a new chapter in my life. I knew that um, his senses would be different, and I would be needing to take care of him for a while, but God had given me a peace that it was going to be okay. When Barry was discharged from the hospital, he had to learn how to walk and balance himself again. Specialists performed multiple surgeries to repair his retinas and his inner ears. I was looking in, trying to look in the mirror and I couldn't see myself. And I can remember just being so frightened and feeling vulnerable that I began shaking. In an instant, my whole life had been almost taken away from me and I, I had the most amount of fear and insecurity that was imaginable. Barry wondered about his career as a worship leader and a musician and how he would support his family. I just cried out to God and I said, you know, God, if you'll give me enough hearing back so that I can just hear pitch, if I can just hear that, 
and sing to you again. Um, that would allow my heart to rejoice so much, and that's all I want. And so um, God started to restore that from that day forward. Barry's recovery was long and challenging. Cynthia remembers crossing the first big milestone. I remember the first day that he actually heard the coffee pot, and it was just like some small little thing. Yeah. But that meant a lot. Eventually, Barry was able to see clearly and can actually hear well enough with the hearing aid to return to the music career he loves. Dr. Green, his primary physician, will tell you Barry Blaze is a walking miracle. It, it really is miraculous the way he's recovered from this severe head trauma. In my mind, God's the one that gets the credit for what happened. With limited hearing, Barry penned a new collection of songs for his Code of Ethics band. The most significant moment for me in this whole healing process was the ability again to start recording. And so as God gave those things back to me, um, it was, it was just huge for me. Through the whole ordeal, Barry has come to realize that no matter how difficult the struggle he faces, God is always there to strengthen him. What all of this has taught me, definitely faith and trust in knowing that God is there and he's with me and he's gonna take my hand through the hardest times. And though I'm gonna have a lot of fear sometimes, I will know he is with me and I'm held tight in his victorious right hand. Waiting for the Lord and wow. knowing He's faithful, yeah. knowing that He's going to answer prayer. I know there are many of you today who have needs in your life, and, and we want to encourage your faith yeah. by sharing with you stories like Barry's where people have been touched by the Lord. This is Doris who lives in Raleigh, North Carolina. She was rushed to the emergency room with congestive heart failure. Her fourth heart valve wasn't functioning. Her cardiologist said there was no hope that she was bound to die. Doris went into a deep depression, praying for a miracle. One day she awoke to this program, and Pat, she heard you give this word of knowledge. You said, the left ventricle in your heart is not working properly. The valve is deteriorating. Right now, God is giving you a new valve, and your heart's going to grow and be strong in the name of Jesus. She said immediately she felt a tingling in her heart. She knew she was healed. Later, her doctor confirmed her healing and said it was a miracle. She the is The valve healed. had been received. That is a creative, a creative miracle. miracle. Mm -hmm. A valve? Replaced, yes, Praise by the hand the of God. Lord. Yeah. Oh, my. Tracy, who lives in Decatur, Georgia, was feeling tired and run down most of the time. She was diagnosed with a leaky heart valve. Here wow. you go again. She did not have surgery, but continued to deal with the effects until last January. Then she was watching the 700 Club. Terry, you said this word, somebody else, you have a leaky heart valve. Looks like wow. doubles on heart valves. And God is healing you. You will not have any of those symptoms anymore. Tracy, uh, claimed the words that is for her. The next morning, she was feeling much better. Her skin color began to improve, and within a month, she was feeling great. Whew. God heals hearts. He heals legs. He heals minds. He heals strength. He heals everything. He heals marriages. Mm -hmm. God is almighty. We just say it over and over again. He is the creator of everything. His name, His name means He who causes everything to be. Now, we're going to go to him now, and we're going to say, Father, we come to you because you love people, and we ask you to touch people today. So we're going to pray. Father, Terry and I join hands together. We believe you for miracles. Nothing is impossible with the God we serve. There's somebody who's hemorrhaging in your lungs, you're, you're, you're hemorrhaging and bleeding, and God is stopping that hemorrhage right now. It's, it's remarkable. You're going to be, it's a tuberculosis, I believe, and God is healing you of that completely in Jesus' name. Terry. Someone else, you have an, an, uh, an odd chronic eye condition where your eyes just water constantly. I mean, you see commercials on TV for drops for people with dry eyes, but your eyes water constantly, and that it, it affects the skin underneath your eyes, and it's just raw and red. God is healing that condition for you right now, and it's simply not going to occur anymore. Somebody has a big toe. It's swelled up. You mashed it somehow, and it's all swollen. It hurts like the crazy, and right now, 
the swelling is going down, the pain is leaving, and you're going to be absolutely whole. Dramatic miracle in Jesus' name. Someone else, you have a child that's chronically, chronically ill. You'll know this is you because your child was just baptized. Jesus is healing your child. Lord God, nothing is impossible with you. We ask that you'd heal a marriage. Yes. Somebody, I think the name is Lindy. God is going to heal your marriage. Don't, don't despair. Just praise him and know that he is a God of order and he loves you. Now, Lord, for everybody in this audience that's suffering, they have financial problems, whatever it is, I pray, we pray together, yes. let Jesus. your power be manifested. Show forth your greatness, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. And amen. Praise the Lord. Raise your hands and thank Him. Take from Him the goodness of God. If you want somebody else to pray with you further, you can call in. The number's there. But more than anything, you call upon the name of the Lord because He loves you. Terry. Well, still ahead, we've got your questions from our chat room, and we're going to bring it online right after this. It doesn't matter what anyone's done. God's forgiveness is bigger than any sin. And He can restore that life no matter how messed up and how broken and how much of a disaster they've made of it. If they've still got life and breath, God's hand is still extended and He'll still, like that father ran toward that son. If they would turn, He'd do what He did for me. He'd take off running toward them, wrap His arms around them, forgive them, and change their life. When you look in the mirror, can you imagine erasing years of aging? That's what I used to look like. Lifestyle Lift takes only about an hour. See the difference immediately. I'm Linda. I'm 70 years old. Can you believe it? Call now for a free information kit. It's quick, affordable, and takes only about an hour. Lifestyle Lift, a breakthrough medical procedure that helps remove wrinkles, frown lines, and sagging skin. Call now for a free information kit. Consultations are free. Call Lifestyle Lift today. When Marjorie Schmidt developed health problems, she and her husband moved to a warm climate to get some relief. But while her physical condition improved, the couple's financial health, health took a nosedive until they made an investment with lasting dividends. Rod Schmidt is a construction contractor in Rapid City, South Dakota, and has steady work despite the downturned economy. He and his wife Marjorie love the Midwest, but years ago, they had to quickly move to a warmer climate because Marjorie had several health problems. They chose Arizona. It did create a real concern of why my body was malfunctioning so badly. Rod thought he'd have no problem getting work as a general contractor in Arizona, but he couldn't seem to win enough bids to get by. I couldn't pay for this, couldn't pay for that, and I was working for one-third of what I was used to making. Then Rod learned the biblical principle of tithing. And it really struck me for some reason that day, it just pierced my heart. And I knew that I was robbing God in tithes and offerings. It was the same lesson Marjorie was learning on the 700 Club. So the Schmitz agreed to tithe. And it wasn't long before Rod's contracting business picked up. He got more jobs and better paying ones until they were once again financially secure. And Marjorie's health did improve in Arizona. And when she was completely recovered, she felt God told them to move to Rapid City, South Dakota. My reaction was, no way. I've been here 12 years, built a whole new life, new church, new friends, new business. I didn't want to go. And then I asked her, are you sure you're hearing right? Rod began to pray about the move and soon realized, yes, God did want them to move to South Dakota. And when they did, he began winning contracting bids immediately, making more than double in his first year than he made in Arizona. This could only be God that is doing this because you, no one could arrange all these circumstances and these people and line up all these things. It was God working in my life and giving me this work. It was just a lot of happiness of, wow, look how good God is. And I'm just totally convinced that as I continue to give, God gives back because he says, give and it shall be given unto you. Boy, the Schmitz have learned the secret. Isn't that great? God does what He says. He keeps His word. The book, 
the Bible says very clearly, given it will be given unto you. Press down, good measure, running over will men heap into your bosom. So I, I tell you, it takes a lot of faith for a husband to move from Arizona to South Dakota on the yeah. basis of her <laughs> of, of the, the wife's reading. Of most people. <laughs> Woo well, South Dakota is wonderful. It's a wonderful state, but uh, so is Arizona. We're going to give you this, the law of expectations. Gordon and I did a little teaching on this. People seem to like it. And um, we'll give this to you as our gift as you join the 700 Club, just 65 cents a day, $20 a month. And you could be part of an army of thousands that is reaching this world for the glory of the Lord. We've got some questions. We do. This All first right. one is from Susan Pat. She says, I've seen your show give words of knowledge to viewers. I've heard people give them at my church, but no one has ever given a word of knowledge about me. How can I get one? Well, it, it just doesn't work that way. It's the sovereign work of God, and God speaks to people. He speaks to your inner man, and, you know, we speak out things, and you, you pray that you've heard from the Lord. And, and so, uh, the, the, we're not supposed to be directed. You know, the worst thing in the world is to, to, to you know, get uh, a word from somebody. Well, you tell me what I'm supposed to do with my life, and you have a word. You better be careful about that. Very yeah. careful. He says, God just doesn't do that. You know. All right, what else? Okay, this person says, yesterday you mentioned the great white throne judgment. One viewer had a question about that. What is the point of judgment day? Aren't we judged as soon as we die? Uh, not, not according to Revelation. Um, of course, Jesus said, if he that hears my word, believes on him that sent me, has everlasting life, and shall not come into the judgment, but is passed from death to life. He told the thief on the cross, today you'll be with me in paradise. So there is uh, that for those who believe in Jesus. But for the vast majority of people in the world, they're, they're just going to be uh, held in some sort of a suspense until such time as uh, uh, the last judgment comes. And that's the great white throne. The, the, and then the books are going to be open, and everybody in this whole universe is going to be judged. All right. This question is from Wayne, who says, recently you talked about your brother's cancer. You said when it had spread, you prayed for comfort instead of healing. At what point do you stop praying for a miracle healing? Well, you stop praying when you know your prayers aren't being answered. And the thing I, I started doing at that point was to get my brother ready for heaven. Mm -hmm. Because uh, we just weren't seeing. For either he didn't have the faith, I didn't have the faith, or it just wasn't, you know, was God's time. time. The Lord. And um, so I told him about heaven, and he was very comforted. And he, he, he just, I told him how wonderful heaven was, and, and he prayed with me to accept the Lord. That, that was the most important thing. His soul, his soul was saved. His body left, but he's with, in heaven, and I'll see him when I get there. This is Alan, who says, on yesterday's show, you talked about the 12th Imam. Who is he? Is he the Antichrist? Uh, I don't know if he's the Antichrist or not, uh, but uh, I do think that the, the, the Muslims, at least the uh, Iranian branch of the Muslim, the Shias, believe that there's a, a Messiah figure. He's called the Mahdi or the 12th Imam, uh, that he's going to come and, and, and convert the whole world to, to uh, Islam. And before he does, it's supposed to be a great devastation. Now, they think that they're going to bring it in. I mean, Ahmadinejad thinks that he's going to have to cause the devastation. It's going to, he's going to do the imam's work. So you give that man an atomic weapon, trust me, he's going to lose it, use it because he feels that's part of his religious mission. But that's who the 12th imam is. It, it's kind of a, a counterfeit of what we believe about Jesus. Well, we leave you with these words from Psalm 103. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Here at CBN, we see amazing things happen when we stand together. That's why we want to say thank you to the thousands of you who recently pledged to join the 700 Club. Your monthly gift makes it possible to bring crucial help to those who need it most. You help heal the sick, feed the hungry, and preach the gospel across America and throughout the world. You've brought health and hope to people in desperate need. And changed their lives forever. Just like you did for Minaj and his friends in Nepal. Minaj invited his Hindu friends to watch CBN programs, and he and 19 of his friends accepted Jesus as their savior. Then you sent them Bibles. For some, this was the first gift they'd ever received. 
Now they're telling others about what Jesus did for them because you gave. So please, watch for this mailing and send in your pledge. This year, millions will know the love and saving power of Jesus Christ. And that only happens because you were there.